Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And today is another episode of Thrifty Canucks. Woohoo! And more stuff that I get to put away. Now, hopefully, I'm going to keep my eye on this clock a lot because the last video was really, really winded and over the over the top. So, I'm going to keep my eye on, make it short and then make another one. <laughs> So we're still working on my summer finds um, this year and it's a combination of everything from who I was with and where I was and it's just a mixed bag of nuts, uh, just the way we like it. So I'm going to start out with the books first. I got a pile of these vintage books and I know some of them came from one of my uh, um, sellers there that I always enjoy going to. I don't know his name, he's a big dude. Lots of hair. He he looks a lot like Jay Leno. And <laughs> I think his name's John, but I'm not sure. Um, anyway, he sees me coming now and he's, oh, I've got books for you. So I paid uh, $7. I think Thelma was with me when I bought all these. And so I paid $7 for the lot, which is a very fair, fair price. Um, I think most of them came from him. There might be one that I, I think the Queen of Scots came from someone else um, or somewhere else. I don't know. I have this thing about the Queen of Scots. I haven't read the book yet. I mean, we kind of all know from history that the outcome. Um, but I've I've always wanted to read the book, and I think now I've got three or four copies of this book. Um, so eventually, my plan was to do books uh, or journals uh, using the the title in the journal, of course, as part of the makeup of the journal with the idea that it would be a book with queens and royalty and, and, you know, that type of thing. Not necessarily queens of Scotland, uh, but, but definitely queens and royalty. So I bought this book and I've always meant to re read it. So one of these days I will actually sit down and read it. I'm not a book reader, but I, this one I think I would like to read, even though I know the outcome. But uh, look at this uh, uh, jacket that the, is around the book. It's kind of fun. So this will get cut up definitely for uh, fodder for going in the book. And I love this uh, title right here that I would use, you know, in a journal card or a tag or something. But this just is such decorative paper to use as an element in the book. Um, and then the, the book itself is covered in the same stuff. So it's fun that I can then use this inside uh, whatever it is I make uh, with this. And, and I love even using, you know, the write-up of the artists, um, any little information that's on here, on both sides here. Those become fabulous tags, like a base for tags. And then I, you know, I collage over top to create some fun uh, interest. Um, the end papers are nice, but all of this would, of course, get gutted. I like to put at least one or two pages of the book in the book when when the time comes and usually I like to make reference to the um, date of publication and I can hear it's 1935 so this uh, you know it's a title page so this would definitely get folded up in the book as as, uh, as well as a couple of other pages that say you know the Queen of Scots and you know other little um, headlines oh I didn't realize there was an image in here so these would get definitely used in in the journal uh, whenever I put it together and I think yeah, I don't know if there's any more images or not oh, lucky find oh maybe there's a few yes there are a few so these would definitely be used um, I would probably use them in a way that they are maybe flips or something in the book so that you get to see both sides wherever it's relevant to have both sides I wonder if there's more oh, yeah there's more okay so those would get used for sure in the journal so fun fun book and uh, yeah I'm gonna read it first I'm actually gonna read it <laughs> I think this is one of those books that I'm once we, we're putting up a gazebo on our deck and so once we put up a gazebo I would love to sit in the breeze and read it uh, on on the deck this book um, purchased because of the, the cover first uh, 1923 uh, the pro, prose and poetry of John Milton. So just a poetry book. This is all going to be gutted to use for, you know, uh, fodder and for collage. So no, no big deal about the book itself for me. Uh, but I will pull the um, uh, papers out and use the cover cover you can't really see the original writing here but I may do a dry brush over top to see if I can pull the colors out a little bit more and then leave the book 
reasonably uh, at, at um, the way it is, but I may, you know, collage on top of it. But I definitely want you to see the color of burgundy here. So that's that one. I've got a basket now ready to put these into as we go along. Uh, an anthology of English verse by John Drinkwater. I don't think this one's old. Love the end papers in it. Um, love the paper. It's it's like a rag paper. It's not rag paper, but it's like a rag paper. Has that kind of feel. 1924, manufactured in Great Britain. Love the raggy edges of the paper. And just small little um, poems. Some of these would be fun to just tear out and tuck into a, a journal, uh, just the way they are, just kind of folded. You know, if I can find something that's relevant um, to whatever project I'm working on. So these go kind of in a different spot in my studio so that I know that when I, I want a book page um, that I can use to, as a tuck item, um, this is where I would pull it from. And, you know, I would just tear it out of, you know, it'll eventually get torn out of here so that I can have the book cover separate. Uh, but I would, I would tear it and then just have it as a tuck. Uh, lovely blue color, lovely um, uh, edge, uh, decorative edges there. So this will definitely uh, be used as a book cover coming up. And again, I would save a couple of little pages to put in the book, depending on what the theme is, and then uh, keep the copyright uh, of the book and stuff and, and the artist information in there as well, just to honor the original book. This one, now, now these all came from the, the fellow at the flea market. Um, the History of, of the Theater, not an old book. I think it's 1960s or 1970s. Uh, this is the end page here. I don't know if I would be able to salvage it off of the um, book cover. We'll see. And it's got one more page here. It's, it's a little bit warped. Yeah, 1964. It's a little bit warped. It looks like it's taken some water damage, but the pages are still fun. Um, and some of them are so decorative that I could, again, just take a page out and uh, fold it uh, uh, and, and use it as tuck items in a journal or pull out the two pages. These ones are all stitched in, so I could pull out two pages and use it as a signature page. Um, so that, that would be a fun thing to do. This one, again, I picked them because, you know, they were the right colors. Charles Dickens, uh, David Copperfield. Nothing spectacular about this one. There was, I guess, a dust jacket that has his um, information in here. Printed in Great Britain. I don't know if there's a date. Let's just keep exploring here. Uh, no date on this one. But, you know, it's older, very thin, uh, very, very light pages. So these would be great for collage so that they're not heavy when you're adding other things on top. Fun, uh, very small font and, and very squ uh, squarish. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like it's very tight in the pages. So this is great for doing um, journal cards and collage backgrounds and tags uh, because of the, you know, it's just so squared off. And then you easily cut out the margins here and it's like you have full, full um, page of just font, which I, I like. Okay, this one, the Oxford Book of English Verse. Uh, taking some stress, but I love this cover. You know, it'll take me a little bit to straighten it up. And it's got this vintage old masking tape. I don't find that fun at all. So that's going into file G. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, fun. Oh, look, another surprise here. I got a little, um, uh, a little description card in here. God from on the high hath heard, let sighs and sorrows see, slow the opening of heavens descends to man the promised peace. Very pretty. Again, another book of very thin, thin pages um, and uh, beautiful poetry in here. So these would be, oh, they're so thin. Um, these would be so much fun. They're almost like tissue. 
I'm going to try and see if I can print over top of them like a nice floral. Uh, if you if you tear these out of the book and, and cut the edges nicely because these are, are stitched in. Yeah, they're stitched in, I think. Um, but if you cut the edges nicely, look at the gold edging on these pages. Um, isn't that beautiful? But if you cut them straight and then treat it like a, it's probably what, a, a five, three, three by five, three and a half by five. So it's probably... Oh, it's, a, it's four by six and, and uh, six and a half. So I would treat it like a photo size and put this through the printer, printing something centered on the photo paper um, layout. And then, um, you know, trim it up afterwards to, to use uh, that way. So very pretty for that. Um, and a great cover to make a book cover from. It looks like it went that way. It will take a little bit of playing to get it so it's not warped. I don't want to add another page. Ooh, look at that. I didn't even notice that. Uh, 1927. So this is definitely a keeper in the book. And let's just check the date. We never did check the date on this one. 1926. So somebody already received it as a gift. Prize for Fidelity <laughs> awarded to Francis... F R N uh, I don't know, uh, room room no form I don't know what that says uh, five six uh, June fourteenth nineteen twenty seven real Mildred Rockling principal to be sent to Miss Heather Hope care of D M Hope twenty seven Holiday Drive Canes. Cannabacasis Park, St. John, New Brunswick. Isn't that cool? Hmm. I wonder if that person is still around. That'll be interesting to find out. I might have to do some investigating. Maybe I can't take this one apart just yet. This one, um, Child's Book of Saints by William Canton. Love the, the uh, spine here. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, there is a little bit of embossing right here in the book. And papers. Uh, Every man I will go with thee and be thy guide in the most need to go by thy side. Hmm. Um, let's see if we have a date here. Look at these pages. Oh my goodness. First issue of edition 1906, and then these are the reprints. I'm gathering that this is February 1913. Beautiful pages. There are some images in here. Great for making, for collage. Beautiful. The Seven Years of Seeking. Uh, golden app Apples and Roses Red. Hmm, that would be fun to do. Um, in a fall journal, wouldn't it? Kanash's Little women, Woman. Kanash. Kanach. The Hermit of the Pillar. I was never really into Shakespeare. <laughs> Can you tell? The Dream of the White Lark. So, so there's some interesting... The Ancient Gods Pursuing. Hmm, I'd love to have fun with that one. Um, sometimes I love when you read a title and it inspires you. The Song of the Minister. Of the Minster. Um, in the Forest of Stone. Oh, interesting. So yeah, another great book. So all of these were like for, for the total of $7. A book of fireside poems. 166 poems compiled by William Bolin. Sort of... Um, heavy paper cover, uh, like a, a book cover, brown pages the way we love them. Oh, look at that. 1942, fireside poems with some little imagery inside. Again, multiple uses for this, whether I use it for collage or inserting into a journal. Um, I could actually even cut out all of these pictures and, you know, cut them out down to look like stamps or spot elements to put on pages. Very pretty um, and very lots of uh, possibilities with this. Uh, love that one, the round one. Mm, Going to have some fun um, very soon.
very soon. So um, keep your eye out when you go to housewares. This was a great deal. I don't know, can you see it from there already? A new iron. This thing has not been used. Uh, they say it's been tested and it works and it was $4. So I will further uh, test it. It's Black & Decker, but this thing looks like brand new. You know, you have to wonder, like sometimes these things become uh, wedding presents, you know, like when you go to a bridal shower, somebody buys them an iron or an ironing board, although <laughs> I'm sure they get frowned upon. Um, but but it's not used. So you, you got to wonder, did they buy it to do one thing and then gave it up or bought it and said, um, I don't think I want to ever iron? I don't know, uh, but I will play around with it and see how it works. Uh, my iron, you know, I'm, I, I use my tools uh, to the maximum always. I test them for everything. You know, my iron has been used for melting wax, for, for um, you know, ironing all different types of plasticky type fabrics. So I'm forever peeling things off my iron and having to re-clean it and nothing like the horror of using your iron to to uh, dry uh, coffee paper uh, nice and, and um, straight and flat um, and then <laughs> five minutes later realize that you should have cleaned it when you're ironing some white linen uh, and trust me I've done that many many times but then you know the white linen becomes distressed um, but yeah my iron is it still works it works great so it might be the craft iron and this might have to be the um, fabric iron the the white linen iron so we'll see how that works uh, because because <laughs> mine is just it, I use it for everything I also have my little uh, hand uh, quilters iron and I love that for little quick projects but I haven't been doing anything quick lately so I, I have put it uh, to the side but I will bring it back out on my desk once uh, I start getting into uh, working with small pieces of fabric because that's fun to just iron out a piece of ribbon or something but but for four dollars I really needed a new iron to use for fabric so so and for ironing you know the odd time when I have to iron a shirt um, which is not very often but yeah so for four dollars I I took a chance it does say it works so I will try it and see and make sure so there's that and now this is totally unrelated uh, but I you know if you go to the dollar store uh, you might want to check for these these are um, bamboo toothbrushes and I use them in my studio just like you would use um, any kind of blending brush. Dip it into my ink, into my stencil, or if I want to do any rubbing. You know that the, the um, bristles are very, very soft. Um, so, and it's got a nice uh, handle and it is, um, you know, uh, eventually when I've worn it down to nothing, I can still use this kind of a, as a spatula or a stir stick. Um, not that I imagine in my lifetime I will wear it down, um, but regardless, it is made out of natural uh, fa uh, products because it's wood and um, whatever these fibers are. Um, so so uh, it will be biodegradable eventually, at least better than plastic. Um, yeah, and the plastic bag it comes in. But I find them very nice for, for blending, to use as a blending brush. And this might be a great spot, you know, if, you, if you're so inclined to, to use a, a marker and uh, mark colors if you wanted. Um, I just go by, well, that won't, it won't uh, be the worst thing in the world if I mix blue and green. So I just reuse them. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to keep them all separate, um, that would be the way to go. And so I, I just picked up a few more once I tested them that they, they work good. I think I have two of these now. Uh, so now I have four more and they were a dollar fifty. um, which is way cheaper than your blending brushes. Even when you buy them online, um, you, you tend to get, you know, if you get a six pack, you get two large, two medium and two small. And those little small ones are so rinky dinky, you can't use them. So, so, um, this is, you know, confirmed it works. I like it. And I bought four more. There's your proof. Um, so, so for me, I, I like it, you know, buy one and try it first. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think I was just by myself shopping that day. This one, uh, $1 for a package of tracing paper. It looks like I got 59 by 12 sheets. I don't think there's much missing. Maybe one or two. It's almost like it has like a vellum -y feel to it. Um, I don't know how well it would be to print on. Uh, I'm going to try printing on one of them, but I just, it's like parchment paper, right? It's that fun, thin paper. This would be great for making uh, envelopes or uh, tuck pockets and that type of stuff. Great little overlay. If I can print on it, then it opens up the door to more options. Uh, but I will play around with it. But for a dollar to get, you know, 30, 40, 45 sheets, whatever is in here, um, is very reasonable because you know how much this stuff costs. This is not not uh, cheap. Um, it's good artist paper. So yeah, I will test the printing on it, but lots of possibilities. Even just a signature page in a journal is fine too. So now I'm going to get into the fabric. How are we doing for time? Oh, let's just see. Oh, we're 20 minutes in. Okay. This must have been left in the pile from Thelma. <laughs> Because this is all there is, and it looks like it's the the front of a top, maybe the front, okay, and the sleeves, which are quite decorative just by themselves. They've got these little flip up things that I'm not real fond of. I think I would just take my my you know because they look kind of weird. Um, uh, so I might take my uh, my. Um, blade and just uh, trim them off so that it's flush but the sleeves would make some fun um you know partial journal covers like a, when you know when you're doing a patch journal the front has possibilities as well to be a journal cover there's a couple of darts to take out but nice trim along the bottom i just don't like these flip up things so i think i will take them all off i can use them for slow stitching and something else but just not like this it's like scales or something this is not fish colors. Fish colors are blue. So, so anyway, <laughs> this is the front of the dress. Um, I'm missing a good chunk of the back, and I see some scissor type cutting here. So, <laughs> I'm guessing that the rest of this uh, Thelma took home with it her, and there must have been a skirt that went with it. <laughs> Thelma made me do it, so this is going to be another fabric to use uh, to get off my desk uh, of Thelma's. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> this next fabric comes from Value Village. Um, it is a tablecloth. I know I don't need any more fabric, but look at the colors of this. Just beautiful boho colors. So lots of fun possibilities and, and makes that will come out of this. I've got a plan for it already. So love the colors. It is, it has never been washed. You can feel the sizing and the crusty hardness in here. Um, I have to wash it. I don't, it doesn't smell or anything. I, well, I will re-examine it. If I don't have to wash it, it's kind of nice because it is has this sizing in it because I know it will become very limp once I take the sizing out. Something I should mention, and we, we have a tendency to forget about this, is this is from, um, you know, overseas, uh, you know, Middle East uh, countries, uh, whether it be China or India, I'm not sure. But I don't guarantee that these types of things are color fast. So it's always a good idea to uh, pre-wash them anyway if you're you're going to use it because uh, there could be color that comes off of it I don't I don't know but sometimes you can notice it right away when you're working with stuff and I will come out of here with like really pink hands when I'm when I'm working with something like this and then go oh I should have probably washed it first so I you know I'm leaning more towards washing it um, it and I will have to further reinspect it, but I, I think I will. But sadly, okay, here's the, the tag. Made in Pakistan. So no guarantee that it's um, color fast. Um, yeah, it just says uh, wash in cold water with like colors. I tend to wash them separately um, uh, first um, just, just to make sure. Uh, but brand new, uh, you know, it's... It's definitely new. There, maybe there's a stain on it, but I, either way, I think I'll wash it. 
This next little piece, I don't know where this came from. Did somebody gift this to me? Thelma, did you give me some of this? Beautiful. Uh, um, um, the name is not coming. You guys know what it is. It comes in black, red, blue. And there's paper. Um, mm, the word is not coming. Anyway, you guys know this 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 print. Um, I I know it as uh, in dishes as transferware, because you know it, it was decals that were transferred onto dishes to to make the china, and you know and then fired. Um, uh, yeah, they don't even say on here. What is it? Oh, look, it's got a good housekeeping. Um, a little emblem on here. That's fun to keep for another project. I love these things. These little uh, side edges where they have all the uh, fabric information. Um, but it's pretty enough um, to use as it is. I would use it as a background to cover a journal and then further collage and enhance over top of it. You know, I've got this piece of lace sitting here on this table. And this has to be washed. But I see that it will... Oh, maybe that's throwing off this ivory. Okay, forget that. <laughs> okay, that has to be washed. Now this, uh, I paid a dollar for this. I believe this was when I was with uh, Deb and Jennifer at the uh, St. Uh, Moncton Townwide Garage Sales. Oh my gosh, did we have a lot of fun. Uh, we did that, and then um, Jen went home, and we... we um, slowly caught up to her because um, she was making us lunch and uh, not lunch um, uh, uh, making us drinks so she went ahead she had to go pick up some stuff and uh, got home ahead of us uh, and made some um, fun drinks for us to sit and sip on uh, while we were on her her um, deck in the front yard at looking at the ocean not fun uh, anyway, this I paid a dollar for. I know that uh, Deb and I stopped at this one uh, uh, house, and by then Jen was like, "Yeah, I'm not getting out." Um, and and her, so she stayed in, her, in the car with her husband Rob. And by the way, Rob was such a wonderful chauffeur for all of us ladies. He he would find the yard sales on his phone. And then he would pull up somewhere where it was central so we could get out, walk three or four of them. And, and we all had big shopping bags. And so we would walk three or four of them. And then uh, he would pick us up kind of at the next corner and then take us off to the next one. Because by then he had a whole lineup of which ones we were going to go. And he had them all GPSed. And Rob, it was so much fun. And then when we got back to Jen's place... Um, Oh, uh, Deb and I went on to that antique, um, outdoor antique show, and uh, I bought a few things from there. Where did those go? Oh, they've got to be coming up somewhere soon. Um, but we went on to the antique show, and then we uh, got back to uh, Jen and Rob's place, and then Rob went and got picked up lunch for us at this seafood place. Oh, my God, it was amazing. Um, and, yeah, so we had a fun fun afternoon at, at Jen's Um can't wait to do some of that again. I can't wait till they can come here. Anyway, stop talking, Kim. So, so this was one dollar. We stopped at a house and it was all scrapbooking stuff. Now we got there later in the day, and I'm gonna say thank goodness, because there were so many stamp sets and tools and things she didn't use. Um, I was I and punches, really nice punches, but most of them I already had. Um, but they were like one dollar, two dollars for good stampin' up type punches. Um, she must have been a representative because she had a lot of stuff and a lot of uh, stamp sets weren't even used. Not even they didn't even have the uh, stamp. They were wooden stamps. They didn't even have the wooden the uh, decal to put on the stamps on the stamps yet for some of them. And um, so so Deb uh, was able to buy quite a few different things. And I bought this, and I'm sure there's a couple of other little trinkets somewhere along the way, but it's embossing powder. Um, this is kind of a glittery one. Yeah, glittering, glittery blue. And you know how much this stuff costs. Now, it wasn't 75 cents. The whole thing was a dollar. Um, embossing ink, which we can all use, right? There's no shor uh, shortage of use for this, for whether you're embossing on paper or fabric or collage. 
and then two bottles of this silver embossing powder and like I said you know how much this stuff costs to originally buy I would never I think I've bought maybe three containers of embossing powder that I paid a regular price for and it probably was silver copper and gold and since then I have never paid retail for this stuff because it shows up all the time and and okay this one looks like it was originally around five dollars I don't know if I can peel that off no I can't oh five ninety nine yes it was this one was originally five ninety nine at some type of scrapbooking store so if you look at it from that way, 6, 12, 18, and then you know this would have been the same amount, $24 for a dollar. That's pretty fair. So I was quite glad that she was at the end of the day and most of her stuff was gone. <laughs> Deb was probably quite glad too because she spent quite a bit of, uh, she bought quite a few things, but there was lots of fun things uh, for her to buy um, that, that um, she needed. Um, so, so for her, it was worthwhile, but thank goodness we came there late. <laughs> now, I don't know who I was with, but these DECA cards, the Cape Shoreline, they have, um, they have one with flowers and a sailboat here, and then they have the flowers and a bit of a white picket fence in the sailboat. This almost looks like the view from Jen's deck. There is a highway in between, uh, but it's, it's, she looks straight out into the ocean. So this is almost like her place. Love it. Uh, I had house envy for a couple of days when I got home uh, because it was, it's just so beautiful. I said to Tom, we need to move there. Now this has a plastic sleeve over it. So I'm hoping that the colors look a little bit, yeah, they are a little bit more intense if you look at it from there. Uh, very pretty. So always great projects to use in our journals and playing cards. I don't know why. So Rosie, Ruth, oh Ruth! <laughs> now I know why. Ruth! <laughs> I will hang on to this Ruth until I have a reason to send you a box. <laughs> this is going to you. <laughs> that only took a second, thank goodness. Now this was, uh, I know I bought this at the thrift shop. It was uh, rolled up like this. I, I already took the tag off because I didn't want to fight with the tag because I didn't know what it was. And they charged me uh, $3 for this. And they say it is three and it was three and a half yards. I, I thought, you know, this seems strange because it had this salvage edge that was hemmed. And sure enough, when I opened it up, it was uh, the bottom of maybe a skirt or some type of a, um, you know, one of those beach wrap things, you know, uh, uh, bathing suit wraps, um, because it's it's got a little bit of a gathered uh, thing at the top here. But it's not gathered. It's, it's just got to be ironed flat. It, it was, I think, at one time. But I just really love the the um, the different colors on here, and I would definitely use this for um, doing uh, um, page ruffles and probably some long strips for for uh, wrapping around a journal and and those type of things because it's very lightweight. It's it's a cotton but light lightweight. It's not something I would use on a journal cover. Um, but I would use it definitely as elements within a journal. I mean, there's a lot here, so I will probably divvy some up and send out uh, some to a few people that I know that love these colors. So, so yeah, it will get shared down the line a little bit because there's just way too much for, for what I need. But it is very, very pretty and very bohemian style, very, you know, very um, fun 1970s. <laughs> My time. A placemat. How are we doing for time? We're getting up there, aren't we? A placemat, and it is just a very basic type placemat. But I looked at it and said, two journals. Here's the inside. So if I cut this in half like this, um, th then I have two pieces. And of course, I'm going to have a raw edge here. Now, before I cut it, 
because it's just sewn in these little strips like this, it's very, um, you know, like this, very loose. So before I cut it, I will just take my, my uh, sewing machine, I will take this to the sewing machine, pick one of these teal blue type colors, and I will just crazy stitch all over the place here to both make it more um, secure and a little bit more rigid. Um, because that's what will happen is it won't be so flip floppy. And so then I will cut it along this side. All right. So this will be a journal cover for one journal. And all I have to do is fold it like that. And it's finished along the top and along the sides here. I will put um, um, some type of um, cardstock or something decorative on the inside just to firm it up a little bit so you probably won't even see this pattern by the time I'm finished um, but it'll depend it'll depend on what it's like once it's all sewn but for the most part I like to put um, uh, some type of uh, paper inside to make it a little bit more sturdy so here you have a journal that has the top stitching and the side stitching all done it is ready to sew in you know two signatures easily in here it will be about, it'll be about, well, it'll be six inches by, uh, not quite nine, well, maybe six by nine. So it is regular journal size. Now, what to do with the raw edges? Well, I would definitely stitch it closed uh, for starters. And yeah, I could fold it inside or, you know, fold it over and then stitch it nicely. But I'm, you know, I like the shabby look. So I will probably stitch it right across there, leave this shabby looking edge over there and then cover it with trim and cover it with trim on the inside and you won't see the shabbiness. I will take you with me when I'm doing these covers because they are a lot of fun. And yeah, one placemat makes two journals. Now this one is a little more decorative because it's got the three, the tri colors here and a little bit more going on here. When you look at the other side, it's got more. So if I fold this over now, I've got this one. Isn't that pretty? It's not much to do on that. And just, like I said, I will um, do lots of stitching over top. Maybe do some, some um, if I'm going to cover the inside anyway, I could do some slow stitching on top, add some different elements to it. I don't know, do I have anything on the desk here to give you an idea? You know, I could add some elements and further enhance this with, you know, beads and buttons and, you know, do all kinds of stitching on top. Here's a a mess that I'm making right <laughs> but hey I don't have a lot to work with right now um, but yeah it's one of those things that will be this is a super fast cover to make so maybe we will have to have a day where we make just the cover from a placemat uh, a little bit more time yet okay now this I was with Thelma and we went to the St. John um, it's a container market where they've uh, they've uh, taken old uh, train containers and fixed them up and the whole market is these little shops inside of these containers. Now they are more geared towards uh, retail as opposed to, there's a few handmade artisans, but I imagine that the containers are a little bit higher up in price uh, for people to be able to rent them. Because I think once you rent them in the spring, you have to keep them right till the fall. Um, so, so they're a little bit higher in price than you know the average artisan would be willing to pay, I think. You know, um, so uh, the vendors that are in there for a, um, the most part are more high end vendors. You have to go there with the idea that you want to buy a leather handbag for five hundred dollars or a belt for, you know, two hundred dollars, um, which is not, you know, I mean, that's there's a market for that, too. It's just not something that we're interested in. <laughs> um, we're interested in flea markets and, and um, cheap. Um, but, and because we want to repurpose and reuse it, but you know, there's like, there was a beautiful candle store in there that had candles and, and, um, uh, body, uh, products and stuff like that. They're beautiful stores. And if you're looking for a gift, um, great stuff. And if you're looking to bring something home for somebody, of course, great stuff. 
Um, and then there was a lot of food vendors. We, we found some great, uh, a great place to eat. And, um, but there were lots, lots of options uh, uh, to choose from. And one of the things, and I have to mention this because, you know, we don't always um, talk about these things, was the washroom facilities. And they were so clean. Now, usually when you go to like a, a market of that kind of nature, they have those, you know, those porta potty places, which are disgusting. And you have to you either have to use hand sanitizer to wash your hands and you don't want to touch anything in there because you don't know who's been in there before. Um, and and so they're always so gross to use, even though, you know, they look sort of clean. They're not always clean. Right. But at this market, I have to say, uh, we stopped to use the washroom there, and they had turned a couple of these containers into washrooms, and it was run by Irving, and, you know, uh, kudos to you, Irving. You know, you always talk about how clean your washrooms are. These were amazing. I was really, really impressed, which is why I'm talking about it. But um, very nice facilities, uh, and I didn't feel uh, like you had, there was running water and there were paper towels and everything that you needed, and they were bigger washrooms rooms that, that I like I thought they were just individual units but when you walked in there was many many stalls so kudos to to Irving for really stepping up uh, to create a, a nice environment for those necessities um, but anyway that was the one thing there so um, the the um, one vendor that we found now I don't want to say it for for getting getting it wrong but it was a Middle Eastern gentleman and he was importing from uh, his country and this is a pillow cover okay he did not speak great English I tried to convince him that I needed to buy these kinds of fabrics but he did not quite get what I meant um, so I will when I make a journal from this because isn't this gorgeous oh my goodness I'm at least going to get uh, two maybe four traveler's notebooks out of here if I depending on how if I can make it into I'm just going to try this so I can definitely get two we know that but if I folded this in half yeah I can I can squeeze four traveler's notebooks out of here and get a really beautiful um, book anyway he just had a mountain of placemats and table runners and I think I paid eight dollars for this so when you divide that up between four journals you know it's very very inexpensive now I won't probably use the lining the lining and oh, there's a zipper in here too the lining these are mass made but it, the fabric is just beautiful um, the lining is separate, but on the inside here, it is finished with what looks like some type of an interfacing, which will make it very easy to cut. Thank goodness. And I will take this, uh, ribbing off like this, uh, trim edge here. I can, I've got lots of different things to use, or I could reuse it once I take it apart, but it was the, the fabric and the design that I fell in love with. And so to get four traveler's notebooks out of here, I'm still looking at only $2 a cover, which is very inexpensive. And then I can play on the inside in these colors, this orange and the turquoise, uh, teal blue and the gold. Mmm, just is so yummy. So so uh, definitely a, a fun project with these. And I will go back and see them and get other other pieces. But my goal is I got to use this first. And then I can take one back and show him. So maybe he will have a better understanding of what I mean by fabric. Or maybe next time there will be somebody there that, that um, can speak in his language that can tell him uh, what, I, what, I, what it is I want. But yeah, very nice fellow and um, very nice piece of fabric to use for journals. So love, love, love. Okay, I'm going to cut this one short because we are already getting almost to an hour. This is the last one I'm going to show you. I paid, I think, 3 or $4 for this. 72 by 90 inch tablecloth. But, 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 but. Oh, this is my one of my prizes this week. Uh, they're all nice. I love everything that I find. Um, but this tablecloth, it is 72 inches by 90 inches. So you know it is huge. 
So I'm going to cut this up into pieces um, and, and um, put them in my stash. Now this, as I have told you with the other um, doilies, which I still haven't done this one yet, this um, I won't cut up completely. Can you imagine how many thousand circles I will have? Ho, ho, ho. Lots. But I will cut it up into probably, you know, squared off at maybe uh, 15 by 30 inch pieces or whatever. I, I'll have to play around and see. I will take the trim off because this will be one continuous piece of trim uh, that I can use for other projects. But what I like about this is I will um, cut it up into pieces and then I will just take one when I need it and, and cut them all out. Um, but they make beautiful little collage elements uh, to, to further enhance. These are great for snippets, great for um, uh, snippet rolls, clusters, tabs on, a, on the top of a journal. Like that would uh, fold over very nicely to be a tab. Um, lots of fun ideas. The, I can uh, spray them in different colors or dye them in different colors. Speaking of dyeing, if you haven't been watching Caroline's uh, series, she's got a series of four. I think she calls it um, di messy dyeing or so I, something messy. <laughs> <laughs> she's having fun and oh I'm drooling all over my keyboard just looking at the stuff she's making so do head over to her her um, YouTube channel and check out the series there's a series of four so far she's done part one and part two so I'm I'm excited to watch the rest of them but yeah I'm just drooling not that I can't make those things as well but when you see all the colors together they just look so lovely and um, she has a very simple uh, method that she's teaching us so do check it out because sometimes you know even though you do this stuff yourself you learn a few tips and tricks uh, by watching somebody else's process so I would probably do that kind of idea with this where I color them in different colors based on whatever project I'm going to use them for. But yeah, there is no shortage <laughs> of possibilities. Like this goes on forever. And, and so there'll be some really nice um, uh, fun pieces to work with in the future. I could also use it as an overlay on a, you know, maybe a flip on a page but I doubt it. it you know it doesn't appeal to me in in this uh, bulk look but it does appeal to me as individual little pieces and elements that I can use so this can also be beaded and um, a cluster of buttons added on top of it just fun gonna be fun to play with this so that's it for my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm only getting started with all of the different things that I've got to uh, show you. So, so there'll be a lot of these videos coming up. These are pre-recorded only because I'm using them as filler to fill in in between during the summer and um, probably a good portion of September while I um, enjoy life and enjoy the, the beautiful weather and time with my husband and um, just fun. Uh, you know, we're doing some camping and sightseeing and eating lots of seafood everywhere we go. Uh, and so it's kind of like this is our time. So that's it. That's all for this video. I um, will talk to you all soon one way or another. I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week. Bye for now.